So in this video, what we're gonna be doing is covering my seven favorite Nextcloud applications. Now, if you're not sure what Nextcloud is, basically it is a free and open source web platform that allows you to self-host a lot of these services that you turn to either Google or Microsoft for, such as things like cloud storage, online office suites, uh, Teams applications, and things like that. Now, over the last couple weeks, I've been using a lot of these Nextcloud applications to completely ditch either Google services, Microsoft services, or even desktop applications that I would usually use. And for me, it's awesome because I'm somebody who jumps a lot between different uh, ecosystems, different computers, things like that. And all I need to do is go to my Nextcloud domain, and I already have a ton of different things set up, such as email clients, notes, a bunch of different office stuff. It really makes life easy. And speaking of easy, Nextcloud is actually really easy to set up on Linode, the sponsor of this video. Linode is the largest independent cloud provider on the internet, and it really does give you a lot of options to completely curate your own personal space on the internet. At the moment, I'm using Linode for this specific Nextcloud instance and to run a Minecraft server, but the options don't limit you there. You can use Linode to host various projects, websites, game servers, basically anything that you can run on Linux, you can run through a Linode instance. And speaking of options, one of the things I found really fascinating is the amount of options they give you when you're choosing your distribution when you're creating a Linode. You can choose between Alma Linux, Alpine, you have Arch Linux, CentOS, Debian, Fedora, you could even do Gentoo, Rocky Linux, Slackware, Ubuntu, and OpenSUSE. Another thing, even if you're new to doing things like this, their support is absolutely fantastic. I was having an issue with a email client port that I needed to open up, and they replied to my issue quicker than any other service that I have ever used in the past. In addition to being independently owned and operated, they were founded on a love for Linux, open source technologies, and the community that surrounds them, and they've actually shown this numerous times in their direct support for Linux projects such as Kubuntu and many more. Speaking of love for the community, if you use the link in the description, you could go ahead and try Linode today with a $100 60 day credit. So just go to linode.com forward slash tech hut, go ahead and claim your credit today. And you could go ahead and watch my other video where I went ahead and set up Nextcloud through Linode, and then you could follow this video and get some wonderful applications to go ahead and run on your very own instance. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump onto our system and run through the seven Nextcloud applications that I've been using on a daily basis. All right, so we are on the computer now, and I would like to note before we start, that I'm still in the process of migrating my data from my local Nextcloud instance to this Linode instance, so it's not completely organized and I don't have everything yet. But we're gonna go ahead and get started with the first application on this list, and that is called Forms. Forms is awesome because it allows you to create your own forms or surveys that are hosted on your own instance, so you don't need to rely on some other premium service, Google Forms, or anything like that to go ahead and host this. For example, the one instance that I've been using this for is a moderator application for the Tech Hut Discord server, which you can join if you're interested. The link will be in the description. But overall, this application is awesome. It's really easy to go ahead and create these, so if I wanted to add a question, I would just go ahead and add question. Gives me options for checkboxes, drop down, short answer, date, time date, and things like that. So, for example, if I wanted to add something like time zone, I would just do short answer and I'll say, What is your time zone? Question mark. And then over here, I could go and make that a required input for whoever's filling that out. And it's as simple as that. Dragging questions around is really easy. The, this overall is a great little tool to go ahead and use on your Nextcloud instance. And sharing this is pretty easy. With this, you can send this to basically anybody and you don't need them to have an account on your Nextcloud. So if I just go share link, open up a new tab, paste it in there, this is what they will see. They won't see this top bar right here. That won't show, but it will show everything else. That is the first application on our list. And next we're gonna go over to mail. Now I can't flip around too much because this is my actual uh, business email. So I just opened up one that doesn't really have uh, too much critical information here. But this is really nice because I use this to manage my uh, Brandon at Tech Hut email. And it works like any other mail client, except for you log into this through Nextcloud and it stays logged in. So I could open up uh, my domain here on any device, any website, anywhere, 
and have quick access to my email accounts. Over here, you have all the typical folders you'd expect. You can compose a new message here and reload your messages. Over here under this actual email, I could go ahead and click this to edit tags, mark it as spam, mark on red, favorite, any basic functions that you'd expect out of an email client you can get in here. And I could also reply to emails through here. So right here is where I would go ahead and type out whatever I wanted to send. And additionally, I can add attachments. So I can add attachments directly from Nextcloud, or I can upload attachments if I would like to, or I could share a direct link from files if I didn't want to actually send the attachment through email. So for me, this is a game changer. There's also settings down here. If I go ahead and click on that, you have some other options, including the ability to add more accounts. Uh, this is how I manage my email now, other than the application on my phone. I don't even like, I have Thunderbird here, but I haven't even really used it because I've been using this instead. And from there, that takes us to the third application, and that is going to be news. This is essentially an RSS application where you could go ahead and add sources and get news. You can see the main sources for my Linux news here. I have OMG Ubuntu, it's FOSS, uh, Manjaro announcements, front page Linux, and I have nine to five here. So you can see, I can see all the different headlines. If something interests me, I could go ahead and give it a click and then it will open up that specific article. And overall, there's some pretty good organization options. You can see I have uh, Linux news and local news at the moment. Additionally, I can see the, my unread articles, my starred articles, you can subscribe to news sources. So you just put the RSS link in here, pick whatever folder you want it to go to, and then you could add credentials or auto discover the feed. And down here we have some settings so you can enable compact view, for example, which looks like this, show all articles and a lot more. So overall, instead of using a RSS application on my actual computer, I've just been using this and it is working great for me. Next up is Collabora Online. And what this is, is their office suite. And this basically works just like Google Docs, for example. Before recent, when I started looking at this, the software wasn't really there and you had to use only Office through this, but now this overall works great. So if I just open up a new document, for example, open it up in the text editor, you can see it's a full Office suite text editor here. It's fairly responsive to the things I type. There's a little, like a millisecond delay, but that's because it's also using the teamwork features and the auto saving features that something like a Google Docs would use. So you could actually go ahead and invite somebody to this document and edit it live with somebody else. So that's really nice. And of course it has everything you'd expect. You could add tables, a bunch of text settings. You can insert images, headers, footers, id notes, hyperlinks, bookmarks, special characters. Uh, just anything you'd expect in a file or a office suite you're gonna find in here. Additionally, if I go back into files real quick, we can do spreadsheets. So here we have a full basically Excel type application that we could go ahead and work with. And if I go over to my files, we can see some of the other documents that we can create such as a presentation. So they have basically a whole PowerPoint suite in here that you could use as well as just basic text documents. And from there, that takes us to deck. Now, DEC is a project organization tool. This is one of the things I haven't completely uh, synced over yet. But if I go over to my Tech Hut board, this is basically a list of my video project ideas. And adding new cards is really easy. We just go add card, you could type it out. So let's say I wanted to make a card for the video I'm currently recording. So we just do next cloud apps, hit enter. And then here you can set due dates, you can assign attachments to it, do comments assign specific users if you had multiple users in your Nextcloud instance, and more. Now over here under personal, you can see that I don't really have this set up properly yet, but eventually it's gonna look like this. So you can see I have to do, doing, and done. So if I go ahead and add card, and then I could say like something, and this is where the uh, project management comes in. So then you can assign this to people, assign this to yourself, give it a due date. If you're actively working on this project, you could move it over to doing, and let's say we want to add a tag, it needs action now. So then we'll have that tag, and then when it's all done, you could go ahead and switch it to done, go to finished, no action needed, and then you have that task over here under done. Really nice for project organization. I was using this a lot before I migrated over. And to set it up, what I would want to do is like change this. So I would edit the name of this, and I would call this uh, to do, and then I would just add a new list call it doing 
And then you can see now I have the ability to uh, move certain things over to the doing. And you could really add as much as you want. You're not really limited to their predefined little setup here. You can set this up any way you'd like to set it up. And now one thing I really like is the Twitter integration. Uh, this is my dashboard or the desktop area. And what I do is I set this as the home page for my web browser. So when I first open up my web browser, this is basically what I see. And it gives me a quick rundown of my Twitter notifications, which is very nice. If you want to go ahead and follow me over on Twitter, as well as any other things that I would find important. And the cool thing about this is you can go ahead and enable the Twitter home headline if I wanted to. And just a general, not related to this Twitter app specifically, this dashboard is awesome. You can move things around, configure things, change the backgrounds, the wallpapers, edit your weather service. There's a lot that you could go ahead and do with this. So you saw I went ahead and added my Twitter home timeline here so I could go through. If I click more, it's just going to take me to that Twitter home page. And that's just something I'm really enjoying using. And last but not least, this really isn't like directly an application. It's technically an app because you uh, download it through the app center here. And that is Breeze Dark. This is nice because a lot of the times I'm in KDE or I have dark themes running on my actual desktop environment. And the Breeze Dark theme helps match that to Nextcloud. So then I don't have this really washed out white looking Nextcloud instance. Instead, it's matching the Breeze Dark theme. And you can see here, even under the description, this Breeze Dark theme for Nextcloud based on the Breeze Dark theme made by the KDE project. So when it comes to theming, that's just what I use. Of course, there are more options. Those are my seven main applications that I'm using every single day. But there is a lot more on here. If I go under my apps, you can see everything I have installed here. There's the deck application, contacts, external sites I was using, but it's a really hit or miss because that uses iframing. Uh, monitoring is pretty cool. News we said is awesome. You have PDF viewer photos. Theming right here. So the theming through this is just an easy way to change some colors while the uh, breeze theme adds transparency and things like that. We have user, user status, weather, video player, Google integration, what I'm trying to get to work so I can sync all my photos a lot easier, otherwise I'm gonna have to do it manually. And Rain Loop, that's a email client that I'm kind of playing around with to see if I like it better. But those are the seven applications I use on a daily basis. Of course, there are way more, and as I play around in the Nextcloud ecosystem, I'm gonna discover more, and I will definitely tell you all about it. With all that said, I would like to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Thank you, Mitchell Valentino, for being an executive level supporter. Additionally, thank you, Timo Anthony, Phil Mac, and Kyle. You guys are producer level supporters. Thank you so much. And big thank you to our sponsor, The Node, for sponsoring this video and helping me show everybody how awesome Nextcloud is. So again, if you're interested in that, you can use the link in the description to get a hundred dollar credit or 60 days. So basically if you're not spending more than 30 bucks or 50 bucks a month, you can get it for free for um, two months. So that's cool. With all of that said, uh, information on all, everything I talked about in this video will be down below. I hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.